everyone and welcome to Nursing to Be and to Do, your one-stop shop for health literacy. This video is aimed at explaining psychiatric mental health condition like addiction so that we can all come to terms with people who are addicted to substances that hurt us so much but they are not able to quit. Addiction is deeper than what you see. It's very deep and it goes deeper than you can ever imagine. Especially people with psychiatric mental health conditions like schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, they are at 50% risk of developing a substance use disorder. This is evidence-based. That is having a mental health condition, which could be a genetic predisposed mental health condition like schizophrenia, puts you four times at an increased risk of becoming addicted to a substance. Also, bipolar affective disorder, a condition which deals with mood dysregulation, makes one five times higher at risk of becoming addicted to a substance. When I talk about substances, I mean alcohol, nicotine, marijuana, cocaine, and all the others. Alcohol continues to be the number one legal substance that get many people addicted. Marijuana, although legalized in some states in the United States, is also considered the number one illegal substance that get people addicted to substances. 55% of fatal car crashes that happens in the United States are attributed to being under the influence of alcohol. 50% of crimes committed in the United States are also attributed to being under the influence of alcohol. Alcohol is a legal substance that you can easily buy in the United States. Men are at 90% risk of being exposed to alcohol. Women are at 70% risk of being exposed to alcohol. And these are evidence-based facts I'm giving you. Addiction is deeper than we think. So when our loved one cannot quit being addicted to a substance, it's important for us to understand why and support them in their journey as much as we can. Okay? There are several factors why one may be addicted to a substance. There is a psychodynamic theory that tries to explain why people get addicted to a substance. According to that theory, people get fixated at the oral stage of development. The oral stage where they keep putting things in their mouth, they get stuck there. So even though they've grown, they got stuck there cognitively. And they desire to continuously put something in their mouth. Psychodynamic theory explains addiction using that pathway. There is also a biological explanation for addiction, which links addiction to genetic predisposition in the sense that when a father or a mother is addicted to a substance, there's an increased likelihood of the offspring getting addicted to the same substance or even a different one. In simple terms, the person is genetically predisposed. The affinity for that substance is increased compared to the average individual. And therefore, it makes them more susceptible to getting addicted to the substance when they are exposed to it. Because remember, genetics varies. We all have different genetic makeup. We are all not the same. We could be from the same family, but even within the family, there are variations. Therefore, our risk for getting addicted to a substance may differ or may vary, depending on the collection of our gene pool, based on the chemicals that came together to form us. Okay. The other biological reason is also dependent on adaptation. Whatever you do chronically, it becomes part of you because your body adapts to it. Let's say you are used to chronically exercising. You build muscles, right? That is proof that you've been 
taking care of yourself, building your muscles through exercises, exercising, lifting weight. In the same way, vein, the reward center of the brain that deals with addiction adapts to changes as you continuously use the substance and even makes you at more risk for being addicted to a different substance. Substance use disorder is real. It's real. And it has a link to psychiatric mental health problems. You being addicted can give you a psychiatric mental health problem like schizophrenia, could be substance induced, or you having a psychiatric mental health problem already, like schizophrenia or bipolar, pushes you more towards using the substance to cope. So they go hand in hand. In terms of the reward center in the brain, that makes one more at risk for addiction or to addiction, the process is as follows. Whenever you use a substance, that reward center dumps more dopamine to that area. The area, the name is not important, but in case you care to know, it's a ventral tegmental area to the nucleus accumbens. So let's say you have a room, right? You have a house. You have the kitchen linking to the living room or the living room linking to the bathroom, right? So the VTA, which is the ventral tegmental area, extending to the nucleus accumbens area is where the dopamine is responsible for addiction. Dopamine has several pathways in our brain. And one of the prominent one involving addiction is called the mesolimbic pathway. Those of us who can read to understand when you get a chance to review what I'm speaking about. The mesolimbic pathway is prominent in addiction. That area, whenever you take a substance, it dumps dopamine. It makes you feel good. You feel very euphoric. It decreases anxiety. It decreases your inhibitions. I think we've all witnessed friends who cannot speak in public, but the moment they take a shot of alcohol or two, a shot of liquor or two, they get very confident. That is the dopamine pathway, the mesolimbic pathway in their brain, which dumps dopamine into that area and gives them that sense of well-being, feeling good, so they can function. The same site helps them. It decreases their anxiety. It decreases their inhibitions from talking, so they become more vocal, more kind of confident, and they can carry out their duties. Chronic use of alcohol dumps dopamine, continues to dump, dump dopamine in that area. And with constant exposure to the substance, whether alcohol, nicotine, cocaine, what have you, the area begins to adapt to the high dopamine level and adjust, adapt to the continuous pouring of dopamine in that area. You don't see it with your eyes, but your body naturally adapts to it. And on top of that dop dopamine boost, giving you that euphoria, that confidence, that decreased anxiety, that inhibition, this inhibition to do what you do, the body naturally releases morphine. We call them endomorphins. They are, those are natural secreted morphins that helps, makes you feel good. It reinforces what the dopamine is already doing. Remember, when you are in that state and you get like hurt, let's say you go get drunk and you, you have a knife cut, you don't feel the pain as much. That is one of the reasons why. Because the natural release of endorphins, which is natural morphine, has dampened your pain sensation to the point that in that state, you don't feel the pain until the alcohol leaves your system or the substance leaves your system. Then you begin to feel the pain because it's worn off. So chronic use of the substance adapts the area to too much dopamine use that structurally it thrives. The area begins to thrive with more dopamine. So even to the point that even when you're not using the substance and you think about the substance or you see a picture of the substance, the body releases dopamine. That is how serious it gets. You haven't used a substance, but the thought of it or someone, you see someone using it or you see a picture, it makes you release the dopamine. 
on the on the negative side when you are not using the substance the body begins to withdraw because the changes that you've made to that part of the brain is unopposed it's not compensated by anything else except the substance so then your inability to get the substance or to use it makes you withdraw and the withdrawal symptoms are the reverse of that euphoria you felt when you use a substance right the disinhibitions you felt when you use a substance the you know the decreased anxiety you felt when you use a substance now it's reversed where you get very anxious you get very uncomfortable the discomfort alone is not tolerable so you have to go back to use a substance that is one of the main reasons why people relapse it causes you to use a substance and when you relapse wherever you were before you you did whatever treatment you took to stop you from the addiction your body takes it right from there because the changes have already been made to your brain to the point that it takes you back exactly where you were before you stopped the substance use so you see people addicted to tramol walking around and they say oh i have to do these menial jobs to get money to go buy the tramol that is the reason they cannot endure the suffering as their body withdraws from the substance. So they crave it so much that they have to do whatever. They can even kill to get that money to go get a substance just to satisfy them, their brain, the part of the brain, the mesolimbic pathway that the dopamine has been dumped severally and has structurally adapted to the increased availability of dopamine to the point that you know, without it, the body goes through withdrawal. They have to get that drug to satisfy that craving. That is the main reason why people cannot easily get rid of a substance. So it goes deeper than you saying that, oh, come, let me pray for you. It will go. Come, let me talk to you. It will go. No, you may die trying. It will never, the person may never quit. Unless you take actions. Usually, approaching it, in multiple ways at the same time promises a better outcome so don't just pray for the person take them to a rehab treatment let them go to counseling where they learn adaptive skills to kind of combat the withdrawal symptoms give them a medication that will replace that desire to have the substance okay the brain has several receptors so there are medications structured to fit right there on that receptor where the alcohol or the cocaine or the marijuana would have sat so that medication fits right there on that receptor the person's craving for the substance goes down there are several medications there's another neurotransmitter by name GABA that is gamma aminobutyric acid it's called GABA by shot it's very identical you know to alcohol the structure so let's say someone is actively using alcohol, you want to help withdrawal, and just counseling alone, talking to them doesn't stop. They can use a medication. There are several ones, you know, like a composite. Several medications are available, and some are structurally identi identifiable, identical to alcohol structure, which will go sit on that receptor in their brain so that it prevents them from having that craving. And that helps them to stay away from alcohol and with time hopefully the changes that we made to their brain reverses to the point that they don't crave the substance anymore or even if they don't have the substance they don't feel the withdrawal symptoms anymore because they've they've developed different adaptive features to help them combat the withdrawal symptoms i hope this was helpful